Our gunnery whites ain't good. Well, after talking them up all this time, they better be good, right? Actually, the funny thing is that in terms of impact in an army, the most important upgrades can be reached by rank 4, and at that point, you can abuse it almost as well as one that's rank 40. Almost. The rank 41s just have more icing on the cake. Let's take a closer look. Please like, subscribe, comment, and consider joining Plundered Spoils to my Ko-Fi Hidden Cove. Thanks! In campaign, the Gunnery White costs 1,000 to recruit for 250 base upkeep. On Ultra, health is 3,972 out of the gate. Armor is 30, better than rank and file zombies. Missile resistance is the standard hero 15%. Leadership is 60, substantially better. Speed is 40, which is, once again, far better than the typical zombies. And this is on foot. Melee attack is 34, with an attack interval of 4, which is okay, and a medium splash radius with a max of 6 targets damaged, which is pretty good. Melee defense is 38 default. Weapon strength is 400 on paper, divided between 260 base and 140 armor piercing, which means that this unit is not worthless against raw melee heroes, but it is underwhelming, and in melee, where it doesn't really want to be, it's not bad at smacking around chaff infantry. That's a saving grace, not a plus since you want it firing or using abilities and not getting damaged and tar pitted. Charge bonus is 15, which is not high, and mass is 900. There's worse. Ammunition is 45 by default, with missile strength listed as 300. Base missile damage is 60 and armor piercing is 180, so this nominal figure is due to the reload time of 8. Total accuracy is 80, making this a tremendous sniper. Calibration distance is a healthy 150, and calibration area is 2. So yes, as your forces go, this is basically a sniper. At least at the start. The white causes fear, has extra powder, and is not a siege attacker by default. Now, let's look at the white on a rotting Promethean. I know these haven't always been regarded as great mounts, but bear with me. Upkeep only goes up to 275 default. Health jumps to 4980. Armor leaps and bounds to 120, dramatically raising tankiness. Leadership remains at 60, Speed is now 45, with a charge speed of 60 if you ever use it. Melee attack is 38 base, with an attack interval of an improved 3.8, plus a medium splash with up to 5 targets damaged, yes, one less than on foot. Melee defense is 46 base now, and weapon strength is reduced to 350, with base damage 105 and armor piercing 245, making the white far better at willing down armored opponents. Charge bonus is 30, mass is now 1500. At this point, the white becomes a siege attacker, but does not have charge defense versus large that I can see, and explicitly gains fire whilst moving, mainly relevant while chasing something off a battlefield and taking pot shots at the juicy unprotected back. You will take down a few lords the rest of the way like this. The ranged weapon is unchanged by the mount. In the top line generic skills, Lucky Charm adds plus 15% missile resistance. Against some factions you can be lazy about this and fill it in late, but it can save a white's undeath in other situations. Tenacity adds plus 8% to hit points, useful but not your top priority. Embedded in an army, the white does training, which works differently now, with each pip adding another plus 10% to unit experience earned. No fighting, no XP, at least from the hero stuff. The on the map passive is boost income, going up to plus 6% bonus income. That said, whites are so useful in battle, you rarely want one rotting away in a province. Against settlements, whites can steal technology, which isn't practical until 1. You're rolling in money. 2. You're rolling in whites, not needed in armies. Otherwise, it's a good way to get a white wounded. Against heroes, the white will inflict wound, with 3 pips obviously increasing the odds. Against an army, the white does block army to lower its movement range. That's good, but you rarely want to quote-unquote waste a white on this job. Specialist gives you the action cost reduction per usual. For the second line, we begin with Cackle Fruit, a 3-use magic missile causing a 12-second, 45% speed debuff with a 5-meter detonation radius and once deconstructed, 60 base damage, 30 armor piercing for a total of 90. In Spirit, this is a flash bomb with a pirate spit. Range is 70, so if you're using this, you're desperate to stop something from hitting your lines, either at all or at maximum speed. This was the prerequisite for Enchanted Ballistics, lasting for 32 seconds in a 35 meter radius, granting plus 60 accuracy and plus 20 reload skill. I've hammered at every turn how most stuff in this roster is at least a little bit less accurate than living counterparts, and how reload reduction time isn't nearly as prevalent in the tech tree and stuff. 
but the power tends to be high. So mixing that power with accuracy and reload reduction with the white? Amazing. Dead eyes can be picked up right after, and I highly recommend doing so. This creates a passive effect on the white and allies in a 35 meter radius granting plus 10% to base missile damage and armor piercing missile damage. No, this is not explosive damage. This is pistol, handgun, hand cannon, carronade, necroflex colossus direct fire. It is not an active ability, it is a permanent 100% uptime 35 meter radius hex. And so, at rank 4, the gunnery white is already the linchpin of your firing lines. You get this by default along with the self extra powder buff, but more powder with an exclamation mark is just like restock for other factions, a limited use ammunition reloading power. I think they've made it more user friendly in recent centuries. If I'm being vague, vampire admirals live a long time, and it's kind of blurs. At this point, more powder is just a point, click, fire, and forget. This is what you use to feed good old Queen Bess. On that note, Powder Keg reduces the cooldown of more powder by 15% and has one more use per battle, raising the maximum to 5. There ought to be nothing standing except you, dead or alive, by the time you get through all that powder. But remember that the real use of this is to keep extra powder buffs active, since 30% extra damage is nothing to sneeze at. For those who sneeze, of course. Incidentally, you also get a basic bomb throw that's a simple damage ability meant for softening up massed infantry. More on that later. Shark Bait has three pips, and since you only need one to advance to the end of this line, you may not get all three until much later, but you can get a maximum of plus 10% hit points and plus 12 melee defense, which are good things. In the third line, Always Ready adds plus 8% speed and plus 8% ammunition to the white himself. Lacquer Powder offers a simple and strong plus 12% missile strength buff at three pips. Powder Monkey gives the white himself reload time reduction of 12%. Gun Sight adds a max of plus 10% range and plus 40 armor piercing, so that would put the basic weapon up to 198 range and 220 armor piercing per shot. Finally, Pyromaniac changes your earlier boring bomb throw into a pyrotechnic weapon that inflicts burning on units within its modest detonation radius, causing up to 25 entities per unit to suffer 5 damage per second for 12 seconds. That's 60 damage total. It's great if you're willing down some weak archer units as a skirmisher, which you could try and do a lot better with on the mount. Hmm? Hmm? Wait, you ask? I'm forgetting one? Oh, that's right! I'm covering this last because it fundamentally changes how your ranged weapon works. It's a trick stolen from the Chaos Dwarfs, basically. As the word implies, Blunderbuss enables you to fire multiple projectiles from the ranged weapon, which is great if you hit, but creates a natural spread. And while this increases the total missile strength, it also diminishes your range by 20%, and just by the nature of physics, decreases your accuracy. More pips make up for the lost range, but not the lost accuracy. This means there is absolutely a case for leaving them as snipers. On the other hand, the overall damage gets so much higher with the Blunderbuss version, plus you rarely have tight control over the range you fight at. So, being much deadlier at close range is often an excellent trade for you. Besides, your real job was accomplished back at rank 4 anchoring the gun line and making it deadlier, more accurate, and faster firing. So since we need to talk briefly about how to use the gunnery white, that's usually job number one. And also job number two. Job number three is to risk yourself ahead of the gun line to try and stop stuff from waltzing into your gun line and disrupting it. Your mileage is going to vary a lot. Job number four is to detach yourself from the army and skirmish with the enemy. Even on a rotting Promethean, you're never going to be fast enough to be great at this job. But if you have a chance to do extra damage with your abilities, go ahead and do it. 30% missile resistance combined with 120 armor can make fools out of a fair number of factions. To a point. You're still basically volunteering yourself as shark bait, which is why that's in your skill tree. Finally, just pursuing broken lords on crab mount and taking pot shots at their backs works sometimes. Don't forget to try because finishing off fleeing targets is not a strong point of your faction. Regardless of there being some cool stuff in there, I repeat one last time. The Gunnery White is 90% of its value to a typical coast army at rank 4. Dead Eyes and Enchanted Ballistics is all you need to be of tremendous value since more powder comes inherent with the character. The White is never stronger than the army he supports, but he can turn that army into a true menace. Queen Bess is one example, sure, but if you have a single carronade unit trying to take out a dragon, a combination of more powder and a spiteful shot spell 
cranks its accuracy up by 90 and its damage up by 30% per hit, if you got it up over the 80% ammo mark. These are the plays which turn the coast from pretender to contender. Take care and have fun making enemy health bars disappear. At least your handgun line will. And when your enchanted ballistics runs out, maybe have a second gunnery white to add more. Manan will have plenty of company in the depths after that.